All right. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be working on the lightsaber some more. And I am excited to make some progress on this. So, yeah, as usual, if you have any questions or anything you want to chat about, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep working on this. Also, bounties are still available. Not much to report right now. Alright. What are we working on the next? I think we were doing buttons. Yup. We did this button. Now we need to do these ones. Which, if I'm correct, didn't have a model. So we'll have to make one. That's fine, though. Yep. I think we picked this one because it had um, uh, a lot of different sizes, which I think is something that we are going to need. Create new component. Ah, yes, this particular variant of the switch is really tall. I forgot about that. Alright, let's see here. Well, the data sheet is kind of helpful in giving us a symbol. Check this out. Which one are we using? TL1105, so this one. It's all sideways. <laughs> kind of. But we at least have a layout over here that we can emulate. So cool. Alright, so for a symbol. forgot I was doing everything in mills again. <laughs> Haven't figured out how to do filled circles yet.
end up with really awful looking uh, uh, circles here. <laughs> That works. There we go. Hopefully everyone's having a good Thursday. All right, let's see. Uh, we need to get the right names on everything here. So the top ones are three and four. Three, three, and turn the name off, right? Yes. And this one's four. And then we'll do the same thing down here. This is just according to the schematic that's in the uh, data sheet. All right, one, one, two, two. All right. All right, looks good. That is the switch. It's kind of a weird, the way it's drawn in here is kind of weird, but I just elected to do this. <laughs> we'll uh, see what happens. I hope this thing has like a model I can download. That would be the best, but if not, oh well. All right, time for a footprint. Give it a sec, it's loading. That probably means that my quality of the stream is probably not great either. Yeah, frame rate's a little low. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to metric and we're gonna make a pad. Inside of this needs to be one millimeter, which is actually sizable. Interesting. I guess it's not. Okay. And then I probably want a little bit more of a pad to land on. One, one. Oh, this is the whole size. <laughs> probably want this to be like two. Yeah, that'll be good. Give it a good solid contact space. All right. And then this is gonna have to be at negative 3.25 and at positive on the Y 2.25. Okay. All right. And there's four of them. Five, 
2.25 negative 2.25 Five. All right, and then we just need to name them uh, three, four, one, two. All right, cool. Um, is there a model that I can find online? It's from eSwitch. I wonder if I go to their website. Nope, no models, just a PDF spec. So I guess we're making our own. <sighs> Can't ever be easy. <laughs> oh, but I did find a drawing of it. Check this out. This will be helpful. Interesting, okay. Height low, height off the PCB. This is gonna be semi-complex. I'm wondering if I shouldn't try and make something in FreeCAD for this and then just import it. That seems almost like it would make more sense. But I don't know enough about how to do that quickly, so. Hmm. Yeah, I think that does make sense. I'm just not going to be able to do it very fast. Alright, I'm just going to do something basic and then we can uh, probably come up with a better option later. Or make something else later. Alright, so coming off the board is a 6x6. Six six. Oh, but drawing it in here is going to be terrible too. Yeah, it might actually be better to do it in FreeCAD. I'm going to give one last shot to finding this switch on their website. Here. Maybe I'll get lucky and find a model. TL1105. This particular variant is probably not very common. You. Oh, it's this one. Hey! Download 3D model. Ah! Uh. <laughs> gotta fill out all this stuff. Email. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to try it real quick. 
Sorry, I gotta keep this off screen because I don't want you all to see info. Let me make sure I'm not showing any of this. Yep, all right. I wonder what they're gonna say when I mark my annual estimated units as like eight. No, I don't want to give my phone number and stuff. That would just lead to... Some poor sales guy is going to have to review this and be like, wow, these guys are, what even is this? <laughs> ah. Deleted the model part number. Well, just when you think it's going to be easy. I wonder if it's blocking anything. Alright, no downloads. I guess we're just going to have to do this by hand. Ah, oh, that was annoying. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. How big is this grid? Uh, we need to change the grid. work. Uh, let's do 3D, nope, all objects. I want to make a 3D body. Alright, so we need to go up to coordinate 6, 6. Hmm, something doesn't seem right. Well, maybe. Oh, no, no, 3, 3, because it is 6 by 6. Never mind. I'm just doing the math wrong in my head. to extrude this what's its height ah oh, it doesn't really get oh there it is 3.6 and we'll make it gray okay And then if I go to 3D view, what does this look like? All right, yep, <laughs> that looks about right. 
And then we'll do another 3D body. How do you do a circle? Hold on. Let's try this. Let's do a full circle. How big does it need to be? 3.5. Wow, okay. Diameter. So 1, 2, 3. More than 3.5 right there. Let's. Properties. Location, width, start angle. Why isn't there a diameter? Oh, it is down here. Radius 1.75. Let's keep the width down to like pretty low 0.1 millimeter. Can I put it on the 3D layer? I don't know that I can. Hold on. That's on the outline. Okay. Hmm. Looks like I can't just make a shape and then make anything into a 3D body, so that kind of sucks. All right. I th hmm. I'm i going to have to make it square, and then we're going to have to actually make a model later in CAD, because apparently I can't download it either from the website, so that's a shame. All right, let's just do that then. So the diameter of this part is 3.5 uh, millimeters. So that's 1.75. All right, so hold on. I probably need to change this grid to a 0.05. There we go. So 1.75 is what I need to do. One, one. There we go. This is like a really wrong way to do this too. <laughs> All right, we'll name this actuator. And then the standoff on this is gonna be 3.5, 3.6. Oh, sorry, standoff is 3.6. The height on this is 16.3 minus 3.6. So thirteen point three, twelve point seven. 
and then we'll make it black. Well, I'm not sure what else I expected. <laughs> Name this the base. And then it'd probably be a good idea to make some for the actual like pins too. They're 0 0.7 by, well, really hard to tell actually. 0 0.3, okay, 0 0.7 by 0.3. I'll probably make them out, make them out here and move it. So what is on the Y? 2.5, so 0.7 would be 1.8. That's 0 0.25, 0 0.3. There we go. They probably go up about a millimeter and then come down a, like a bunch. So. Overall height, let's do negative 4.5, and standoff height is like one. See what that gets us. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted, okay. Here, I'll just drop that right there, I'll we'll copy it. There we go. All right, so that's really rudimentary. Obviously not professional by any means, but gives us the basics of it. Okay. Man, somebody's gonna come find this model one day and just see what a terrible job I've done. <laughs> All right, let's save that to the server. Hopefully no errors. All right, and now we need like four of these. Uh, I guess we'll drop them down here. All right, so while the other one was a connector, these ones are actual buttons, so we have to name them. Switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four. That's easy enough to do. So switches are SW1. And I'm gonna turn off this too.
Okay. I guess now we gotta figure out exactly how we're gonna do it. I think I was just gonna connect them to ground and then probably run them through resistors to the actual board just for some sort of protection. We could kind of debounce too if we want to do that, but I think we could do that internally on the board easy or in the software easy enough. Though it wouldn't hurt to have it. Hmm. Anyone have any thoughts? Do we debounce? You know what? It wouldn't be that hard to do. I might actually just go ahead and throw something on there for that. And then we can uh, always change that if necessary. So, All right, let's see what is in our bomb so far that I can just reuse. How about 0.1 microfarad caps? That sounds pretty solid. What about resistors? What do we got? 4.7 ohm. 154 kilo ohm, 1.5 mega ohm, 10k or 1k. Oh, yeah, we do have 1ks. Okay. I'll probably just use 1k ohm resistors and then those 0.1 microfarad caps. And that would be a good way to do it. Okay. So let's connect each one to ground. go. Oh, excuse me. All right. And then we're going to need some parts. And we're going to need 0.1 microfarad caps. Here we go. Oof. Um, yeah. Let's go to seventy. All right, and then we'll turn off the name thing here. I just realized this isn't centered or spaced evenly, and that probably is gonna annoy a bunch of people, so let me fix that real quick. Well, that's kind of weird. All right. Just let me paste it. <laughs> there it goes. Alright. 
seven C eight C nine. Okay. And then we need resistors. And we were going to use the 1K resistor. Let me actually go ahead and add these to the bomb. C6 through C9. Okay. And then as far as the resistor goes, we're going to use 1Ks. So I'm going to use this one. And maybe we just place them all like over here. go All right. I just got an email from the eSwitch company. Just say I'm repeating my request back to me, but they... <laughs> doesn't look like anything will come of that. Okay, there we go. Oh no, I was supposed to do that. There we go. <laughs> okay. And then I guess we need to name them over here. And then we'll have that on our bill of materials here. At least I hope we do. Yep. Switch zero, switch one, switch two, switch three. I'm, I'm going to rename these. Since we started with switch one here, I'm going to rename them on our list of signals here. So then, using these signal names, TCT switch one.
then we need to go connect him to the teensy. Let's save that schematic. And go over here. All right. <laughs> uh, 24. It's 24, 25. Okay. Excellent. Those are our buttons. I'm wondering now if our power button in shouldn't have had like uh, eh, it'll be fine without any resistors or debounce because that's going to the well actually Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Our power button in goes to pin 2. You know, we might have missed something here. I think this needs to go to multiple places. It needs to go to the on-off. Yeah, it needs to go down here, too. Okay. So the question I'm asking myself is, do I want to uh, put the debounce on this uh, particular uh, pin? I think yes, actually, because then that also gives us the option if we want to just disconnect the button from that pin and only use this power button. That would be a really good idea. Yeah, I think we do that. So we need to use that same uh, resistor and capacitor again. Here's the resistor. Let's place one of these. this off and then we're gonna have to rename that signal as well and then we need to place the capacitor there's little stuff like this you don't account for when you're making the initial like block diagram and stuff but you realize when you're in the middle of doing it that it's actually a really good idea Interesting.
Okay. That works. So then, if uh, we decide not to use that pin, we just don't have to populate R12. Uh, we may still leave C10 populated just as a way to have some debounce on the line, but yeah, no reason to populate R12, and then we can just disconnect it. Let me add that to our bill of materials. Oh, I forgot to add the resistors to the bill of materials around the buttons. What are they? R8 through R11. I guess it's through R12 now. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Uh, let me go ahead and save all this to the server. And then I want to validate this and put it on the circuit board just to see it all there. Hopefully we don't get any errors. Nothing? Okay. This stuff really confuses me. Another day, another ban. Wow, two at once, three at once. Holy crap. There must be a bot or something. <laughs> That's incredible. All right, well, <laughs> three bots at once, three bands. <laughs> Streamlabs, uh, the way I have the filter set up, it won't let you uh, submit, like, put URLs in, but somehow they figured it out, so interesting. <laughs> All right, I don't know why this keeps throwing up. Unknown pin, C62, unknown pin. Interesting. But somehow it executes all of them. Weird. All right. Well, this is getting crowded. Let's drop this down, drop this down, drop this down. Let's get our capacitors out. Yep, there's one. This is turning into a great little nest of wires, and that is awesome. Oh, and here we go. Let's throw this over here for now. The whole reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to A, make sure that uh, everything's coming through without error, and then two, I want to, or B, I'm going to make sure that, uh, um, I want to see how much space I'm going to need for all this stuff. You know, if they're going to use bots to spam my chat, they should at least have the decency to give me a few extra viewers as have the bots view my channel for a little, my stream for a little while. So I get some extra viewers. All right, that looks good. What is next? So we've done all the buttons. Do we say NeoPixels or LCD screen? Maybe LCD screen is next. Maybe that should be next because I feel like it shouldn't be too difficult. Famous last words, but we'll see. These accelerometers are going to be fun because that's an entire board that has to get put in there. 
Man, that's going to really help to have just a 3D model already made. I might just have to do that. Okay, let's do the LCD screen. It sounds like fun, and uh, it'll be compli it'll be pretty complicated. So, I'm still not crazy about this particular screen. It's a white LED backlight, blue normally, I wish it was in blue when it was off, for example, I wish I could get one that was black. Maybe that's an option? Also what happened to this web page? All right, let's return that to normal zoom. <laughs> Ooh, it has a 3D render you can download. Oh, interesting. You can get a white, blue, red, RGB. How does RGB work? Oh, interesting, okay. Check this out. The RGB one has a uh, a cathode for each of them. So you can uh, turn on the red, green, and blue. So the entire background has to be the same color. Why does the one I'm getting this doesn't make any sense. So... Okay, this is a blue and this is a gray, technically.
Hmm. I may not have been able to find him in stock, which is my I might have picked the one that I did. But still. I'm curious if this one is the same as this one. Like in terms of the layout. It is. Okay. So I can probably get away with just uh, laying this one down and then I could buy a different one later. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Transmissive. Are the anode and cathode in the same position? They are. And let's check out the pinouts. Yep, those look the same too. Okay, so I could absolutely just buy a different color one and drop it into the same location. All right, then we're going to use the existing one that we already have. V0, V1, V2, V3, V4, C2 minus C2 plus, C1 minus C1 plus, V out, VSS, VDD, reset. There's a lot to it. All right, let's make sure we're looking at the right one. NSW, BBW. Okay. That RGB one is cool. I'm just gonna double check. Maybe it's it is in stock somewhere and we could buy it. Oh, I don't know that we have the IO to drive, but we may have used up just about everything. I think there was a couple of unused pins. We would need two more. All right, we got three unused, so. Because then you could turn it the same color as like the LEDs or something, or like to match the some sort of color scheme of the, uh... yeah, but the colors don't really look that good anyway. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this. It'll be an upgrade option. I decide to do it later. As far as if it's in stock, it is. Wow, okay. This picture from DigiKey looks pretty awesome. <laughs> With all these pins and everything. It's hard to believe it's as tiny as it is. You know, honestly... Uh, let's see, this is where I get into trouble. I start thinking of all the different things I could do. Maybe this is a good option. And here's why. If this footprint matches the other one, like in terms of where... 
the anode cathode is, the outer one, then I could just use this anyway and still put in one of the ones the one of the single color ones and just not use a couple of the pins. Which based on the looks of this may be true, actually. Uh, the way they do the drawings makes this hard, but... So the edge of this one is 2.2 from the center of this on the other one. How big is the whole width? 41.4. Well, they really don't give you a lot to go on in the other one, do they? 240.2. Oh, wait. One point two point six point six, okay. Yeah, it actually does look like this is the same. Okay. Maybe we go with this one. and just do whatever we need to, I guess. They'd have to be driven off PWMs, so I just realized. So whatever pins we use need to have PWM options on them. Um, Double checking everything, hold on. Hmm, I may have found something where it won't work. Wait. No, it will. 3.4. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it definitely will. Okay. Yep, I think I'm committing now. I'm going to use, I'm going to spec the RGB one. Assuming it's a, well, hopefully it's a circuit maker. All right, LCD screen.
That's a symbol. That's kind of cool. I completely forgot about that. All right. So, hopefully this exists. Otherwise, this is going to be really hard. I'm hoping that because of this particular, the one LCD already exists, the other one will too. Oh, thank you. It does. That's weird. I want to move over. Okay. All right, go away. Delete that. Move this over. There's going to be a lot going on here. And I cannot wait. We're probably going to need debounce caps on everything and oh, so much. <laughs> What's this look like? DS1 is what its name is. Okay. Let's go ahead and validate and commit these changes to the board so that we can go ahead and remove that other one. Oh, this does need to be named DS1. Okay. I didn't even think to check the power usage on this particular board. Hold on. <laughs> Let me just make sure I'm not going to burn something down. Supply current... 0.4 milliamps typical. What about the backlight? 10, 30, 30. Really, the red uses 10 milliamps, but then the green and the blue use 30 milliamps each. Odd. Very odd. Okay. Well, we can use NFETs like we did on the other on the button, so we can use the same things that we did on the button here. All right, let's validate this. Update PCB document. Really? There it is. Here's our new one. Still as tiny as ever. This is going to be such a small screen. We're going to have to get really creative with the UI to make it work. All right. So now to connect all of this up, is there a uh, recommended layout? Because <laughs> that would be nice. Okay. There's not quite a recommended layout, but they do give us a schematic that we can work off of. Interesting. Oh, does R1, R2, and R3 need resistors? Or...
there is resistors connected to these, so that might be something we need to do. I don't know what it recommends though, what resistor values. It's not recognizing that too. Well, I'm guessing like 220 maybe. Because that's pretty standard for 3 volt LEDs. We just put that, we can always pick a different value when we're buying it. This is going to be so much fun to have to go through and write a library for. Interesting. All right, well, let's get started at least on the ones that we do know. Oh, wait, hold on. Three volts, three volts. So the red requires more. Man, they have a massive range too. So three volts is the max. So you can calculate resistor values based on that. Hmm. And then for the red, 2.1 volts. Well, that's the, the drop probably. All right, I think we can do that. Kind of guess off that. So we'll go off the uh, the typical current and whatever their typical voltage drop is, and then we'll get a resistor that will finish out the 3.3 .3 volts at that value. Is there any like LED-based resistors that I'm using already? Uh, 4.7 ohm, 1.5 mega ohm, 154 kilo ohm, 1k or 10k. Yeah, nothing for like LED type stuff. All right. Well, first things first, let's do all the other stuff. Uh, we have one microfarad. We'll probably use these one microfarads, not the point ones. If I have that, I do just because I'll just make everything more stable. And I'm going to use them on these ones as well so that we can just use the same cap all around. All right, so... I'm surprised it doesn't recommend a cap on VDD. I'm going to put one on it. All right, let's see. I'm gonna slide this over. Thankfully it's three volt system so we can connect directly to the Teensy. Um, we need part and we need the one microfarad cap. Oh, we need to actually change in our uh, bill of materials here too. The, uh, LCD that we're using. All 
All right, we're going to need so many of these. Jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. <laughs> All right. Start with that. Let me go through and turn all of this off. New Haven makes some pretty amazing stuff, and they package it really well so that a lot of stuff is contained within the LCD, but you can't ever really get away from this kind of stuff of needing a ton of supporting components for displays. They're so tricky and they're so complex. Okay. See, we want to turn this one. Here, we'll put it out here, actually. And this whole thing will have to slide over some, actually. Like right here. Okay, put a ground there and a ground here. No, oops, there we go. Okay, let me go ahead and put this in our bill of materials. Somewhere around here I have a... Uh... Here it is. The world's longest part number. That is something else New Haven is really good at, is extremely long part numbers. But they're also very descriptive. Unlike these Molex numbers. <laughs> you can practically tell everything from one of their part numbers. RGB, 3 volts, New Haven display, you know. So, rather than these generic numbers that have you confused about what they mean. All right, make sure I didn't miss anything there. Cap, 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 cap. And then, oh, BDD. I think it's 3v3, right? Let's double check that. Yep. Oops.
And oh, the LED gets the same thing. I feel like that should have its own capacitor too, actually. Yep, it's gonna. Mr. C20. All right, I'm going to add all these caps to the bill of materials real quick. Hold on. One microfarad. We have C2, and then we're going to do C11 through 20. Okay. Now I need to connect up these lines. Okay, reset, chip select. I think all of these... Chip select is active low. I wonder if it should have a pull up on it. Hmm. Always be input. That's always input. That's always input. I think actually all of these. Are. I don't think it ever sends data back. No, it doesn't because it's SBI and it's going away. So those will always be input. It's probably okay then. On the reset and chip select, I kind of want a pull up. Yeah, I think I am going to do that. I'm going to slide this way out here. I mean, but we can use an internal one too on the uh, Teensy. It's just a matter of extra parts added to the board. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just risk it. So the TZ has internal pull-ups that'll work just fine for this. These aren't high-speed lines. The SEL and SDA are, but those will be push-pull drive anyway. So. Yeah. So then, since that's the case, where do we connect everything? Uh, let me update the part number two. Our new part number goes here. Yes. All. Yes. Do not show me that again. <laughs> All right, anywhere else? New Haven display. Nope, looks good. Okay. Oh, I missed this requirement when I was doing the. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, I have to go out and add some jumpers apparently. Oh, I've got to add the extra... Shoot, I did this without even checking if the Teensy had extra PWMs that I could use. Er. Please, 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 please. <laughs> it's got them all over the place. Just hoping that it's got them on the ones that I just assigned. Or the ones that are open. Okay, 35, 15... Or nine. Just need two of them to have it. Or I might need all of them. Use P Fed. No, I'm going to use. Okay. The world's tiniest graphics. All right, here we go. Eight and nine, both are good, PWM-wise. Excellent. And then just need one more, either 35 or 15. Please, one of them, please, one of them. 35, not good. 15 is good, okay. So eight, nine, and 15. So many PWMs running at the same time. I really, really hope they can run them all separately. Man, writing the software for this is going to take a mind-boggling amount of time as well. I don't really have a way to, like... This is such a complex circuit. There's not really a good way to, like, breadboard it. So I'm worried that I'm just going to have to buy the circuit board and, like, build it. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to test it. Okay. So we need to change this. Let's see. We're going to add it here. So let's change this to red. Green. Then we said 15, right? This one down here. Too. What does that connect to? Hopefully I encounter that at some point. I honestly do not remember. I'll have to go back and like watch the, my stream video because I do not remember what that connects to. Ox one, ox enable. Oh, to this. Okay. Blue, green, so now the device pin. What are the pins on the device that it connects to? KR, KG, and KB. All 
right, so where is this? Oh, this is GBG. And then KB. And then we want to merge these cells, all of them actually. There we go. Look at that. Oh wow, it printed the thing several times. Uh, we can just do that. There we go. And then we're gonna use an NFET actually. I love making things overly complicated for no reason. All right, excellent. So now that we know that, we can go back to connecting the actual uh, uh, display communication lines. So this one, Screen is zero, screen reset, and screen CS. Those are easy. Oh, not that one. Okay, and then SCL and SDA. We just named that SCK. And then pin 13 on the screen. Where is it? <laughs> SDA. Oh, here it is. Mosey. All right, excellent. And then we'll connect all those in a second. And then we need to do the uh, the FETs here, so. Where did we use those? Was it the buttons? Yeah, here we go. Whatever the heck these ones were. Q2 through three. Q234. This one, okay. I don't remember if I had to make a uh, thing for him or not. Looks like I did. Cool. All right, we're just going to need three of these casually. Man, this is going to be so expensive when it comes time to order it. <laughs> okay, how do we wire these up here? 
So there, signal, and that went to ground. Yep, that makes sense. Right, because they're active low. Yep, okay. Oh, but they have to go through resistors too. I forgot about that. <laughs> Dang it. All right, um... Here, let's put a a ground. Yes. And then let's go do the control lines real quick too. I just realized that this isn't even. Slide this whole thing up one. There we go. Oh, why is that not connected? Okay, and then just trying to make sure I get all this right. Okay. That one's not connected. <laughs> it's a good thing we're checking all this. All right, there we go. Oh, wow. That's not connected either. Or it is, but it's off. Fix everything over and over again. All right. So now as far as resistors go, I think we need to do some math regarding the individual values here. We want to keep it around 10 milliamps for the red. And it's going to have a 1.2 volt drop across the resistor. Let's bust out a calculator. Do some Ohm's law. Point 0.2 divided by point oh 0.01 equals 120 ohm resistor for the red. And then the other two are the same value, I believe. Yes. 30 milliamps across a uh, point 0.3 volt drop. 3 divided by point oh 0.03. 10 ohms. So 120 for the red and 10s for the, the other two colors. Those seem like weird values. <laughs> I might just use 120s for all three. Well, yeah, that would be the safer route. All right, I need to find a 120 ohm resistor. Back to DigiKey. All right, 
in stock active and then we're going to go for an 0805 package These will be fairly low current. Let's see, what's the power equation? It's a uh, I squared R, right? Or VI, voltage times current. So, 120 times 0 0.01. Equals 1.2, that's kind of a lot. We'll see what we can get away with. Might pick big resistors for this one. That can't be right. All right, our resistance, we need 120 ohms. I should, I think that's a fairly common value. There should be plenty available. 825,520. Really? Something went wrong. <laughs> 32, that makes more sense. <laughs> Let's check this one out. See if it exists here. Hey, it does. All right, we're using it. Just simplify things. All right, let me add it to our bill of materials real quick. It's R13 through 15. Our 20 ohm resistor. This one. All right, cool. You know, it's actually looking like at the end there's not gonna be a lot of line items here, but we're gonna be reusing a lot of stuff. That's actually pretty good because it means that we'll be able to save some money by buying things in bulk. All right. Close. Once I have this part done, I might be done for tonight. All right, blue. Green. Red. All right, and then what are the signal names? Screen backlight blue, screen backlight red, okay. The 
the world's longest name. <laughs> Green. All right. Look at that. Just a little too far. <laughs> Now we need to connect them all up on the TNC and all the other control lines. Uh, should just be uh, these ones and then these three. All right, let's do this. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven are all going to this particular device. Okay, what is six? Screen A0. Whoops. Seven is screen reset. Eight is KR. No, screen backlight red. That's the pin name. <laughs> Forgot how ridiculous that name was. No, not that one. Uh, nine is screen backlight green. Oh, wait. This is not going to be. This is screen CS. And pin 11 is Mosey. All right, that's just the first grouping of them. Additionally, we also have two others, the clock and the blue backlight. So 13 and 15, pins 13 and 15. This is going to have to move way out here. Thirteen is the clock. Fifteen is the actual uh, backlight. All right, so 13 needs to be, where is it, where is it, where is it? SCK. And then 15 is green, backlight, blue. All right. That was a lot. <laughs> so 
We go back and look at the LCD screen. All the errors are gone. We got everything connected up. And that is our entire LCD screen. Look at all the pins connected. All right, let's validate this and push it to the PCB. See what it complains about. I don't know what it is complaining about with these unknown pins. It seems to work just fine once it gets everything in there. All right, there's our screen with everything, and there is all of the components that go on it. I guess I'll just start dragging stuff over close to it. Q4 can stay there. C20, C16, C15, <laughs> C14, C13, C12, C11. What are these? Why are these connected? Interesting. I didn't realize that those had to be connected to something. Or do they? Weird. Okay. All right. And then our resistors and capacitors. Or not capacitors. Our FETs. Okay, uh, look at this nest of connections we're going to have to make. This is going to be great. <laughs> uh, this part really confuses me, and I want to know the answer to it. Why are these wires connected? Additionally, all of these pads are connected together. I don't like that. Something's wrong. What are these MOSFETs connected to? Oh, that's right. They're connected to the resistors. Yeah, what side of the resistor is not connected? Or something. This footprint looks really good, but there's definitely something weird about it. Yeah, there's something really weird about it. Okay. Not sure how that happened. I think there's something wrong with the actual part. They didn't do a good job naming everything or something, so I might have to remake that part next time. All right, that'll be the first thing I dive into. But we've made good progress, at least. And we can see all our parts here if we go to our 3D view. Oh, look at the screen. It looks even better. This one looks even better than the other one did. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. All these parts. There's our switches and everything, our USB. <laughs> these giant connectors. <laughs> All right, this looks awesome. Well, 
This is fun. Obviously, there's still there's something up with the screen that we need to fix, but I think we can do that. Let me look underneath it real quick. Uh, it's the model is off too. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some work with that and fix that pad. Whoever made it didn't do something right, so. All right, well, thank you all for joining me. This is a lot of fun. And we got a lot done, but there's still a lot more to do. So I will see you all Tuesday. Bye.